What's up guys? Brand new streaming box in the house. This is the tiny but powerful Yugos X4Q Pro. Now quickly run through the specs. Now this one is powered by the S905X4 quad core clocked at 2 GHz and for graphics we have the integrated Mali G31. This has 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. You've got 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, gigabit LAN, Bluetooth 5.0. This is running full Android version 11. This supports 4K HDR at 60 Hertz and this does support the AV1 codec. Now let's quickly see what you get inside the box. So nice and easy inside the box you get a you get an HDMI cable, a type C power supply. And I'll try and give you guys a close up of the voltage information. This comes with a Bluetooth remote control powered by two AAA batteries and the batteries are not included in the box. Last but certainly not least the TV box itself. So the X4Q Pro is compact in size. On the front you can see a bunch of holes and it says IR underneath. So that basically has your infrared for the remote control. If we keep going you've just got some vents on the side. On the back we've got a type C charging port, your HDMI out, we've got a USB-A OTG port, gigabit LAN. If we keep going you've got an SBDIF audio, USB 3 and we even have a micro SD card slot which could come in handy. And that brings us back to the front and this is how the bottom of the TV box looks. So you can see we have a reset hole over here right next to the serial numbers. So without any further ado, I'm gonna get this all hooked up to my TV and capture card, and we are gonna find out exactly what this TV box is capable of. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test, and this TV box took exactly 20 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And as soon as I connected to Wi-Fi, a firmware update popped up, version 1.1.4, only 94 megabytes in size. And you can see the change log on the left. So nice to see firmware updates are supported. And here is the home screen for this TV box. We have a full Android desktop slash tablet layout and it's completely customizable just like a tablet. You can navigate with your remote control or even connect a wireless mouse like I have. It's also nice to see that we do have a status menu bar at the bottom and the top, which you can bring up by swiping up or down on the mouse. Now, if we head over to the main system settings, Go to device preferences and check out the system storage info. You will see that this box has 32 gigs of internal storage from which 27 gigs are free to use. And if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is indeed running full Android version 11. Now, some other features to mention under inputs and devices, we have HDMI CEC. And here is a very quick look at what you get under those settings. If we go back, we have keyboard and autofill, button manager, and we have menu button customization. So the menu button on the remote can be customized like I've never seen before. You can set different actions based on single press, double press, triple press, or even long pressing that menu button. So very interesting feature there. Now if we go back, we have mouse options, under which you can do things like change mouse pointer speed, you can speed up the mouse cursor, which I am about to do, as I do prefer a faster cursor when using my wireless mouse, and a few other options to play with. Now under USB, we have the ability to change the USB 3 port speed, and by default, it's set to super speed, but it explains just above, when connecting to two gigahertz Wi-Fi, the super speed USB 3 option can cause interference. So then you can drop the USB speed down in those scenarios. Interesting, at least it tells you. Now, if we go back and select display and sound, I wanna show you that screen resolution is currently set to 4K 60 by default. If we go to color settings, you can see the default options here as well, 10-bit color and adaptive HDR, which you can switch to always HDR if you want to. Also, automatic frame rate is available with two further options to select, switch frame rate only or switch frame rate and resolution. Now, there is also an option for real-time hardware monitor. So you can toggle on and off various stats, which will show at the top status bar. And under voice input application, you can actually select Google Voice Assistant as your default voice search. And under power options, you have lots of tweaks to play with, from customizing the power indicator to screen saver, energy saver, power key and timer actions, and lots, lots more. And we also have super user options. So that means you can decide whether you want this box rooted or not. Now let's have a look at the complete system apps. 
Here are all the apps available on this box as standard. I have not installed anything yet, and you have quite a few apps to get you started, including Chrome, Miracast, Airscreen, Movie Player, etc. Now, many apps do not come pre installed, such as Netflix, YouTube, Disney, etc., but you can download any of those and your other favorite apps directly from the included official Google Play Store. But please note, Netflix and Disney Plus were not available to download from the Play Store. So I had to sideload them through a third party app store, which was AppToy TV. Now the first app we need to test is Miracast, which is screen mirroring for Android smartphones. So I tested this with my S22 Ultra, and as you guys can see, quick and easy to connect, and it worked very well with minimal lag. Now this box also comes pre-installed with AirPin Pro, which is screen mirroring for iOS devices. And that also worked absolutely fine with my iPhone 14 Pro, and you can see it working with minimal lag. So this box supports screen mirroring for both Android and iOS devices. So now it's time to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, and I'll be doing this with the included Movie Player app. So let's begin with the usual high bitrate jellyfish demo, the first clip is 160 megabits per second, and you can see it's playing absolutely fine. And thereafter, I tested the 180 megabits per second video sample, and you can see that too is playing fine. And the highest bitrate from them all, 400 megabits per second video sample, you can see is playing back okay, but slightly jitterish, so not as smooth as I would have liked it to be. Now here are a few 4K60 with HDR samples for you to check out. So that was 4K video, now it's time for some streaming, starting off with the 4K YouTube test. On the night of June 4th, you performed an exorcism. Dangerous? What did he do? Homicide, 15 years ago. I don't want to scare the rest of the passengers. I'm afraid you're stuck with us, Captain. The anime is everywhere, but he can't be seen. So what's it gonna be? Okay, so now it's time to test that Netflix app that we sideloaded ourselves earlier in the video. So this version of Netflix requires a mouse to operate and you are limited to 540p resolution max. But to my surprise, Amazon Prime Video actually supported 4K HDR streaming. Oh, here they come. And I did also manage to sideload Disney Plus and it installed okay. But when I tried to stream something, the app would crash every single time. So unfortunately, I could not get Disney Plus to work. All right, so let's move on to some gaming, starting off with Asphalt 8. So for your advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level one. That's right guys, for some strange reason we have Google Widevine level one, but we're not getting any of that benefit from level one certification. So we're not getting Netflix HD. We are getting Amazon Prime Video 4K though, um, and Disney Plus doesn't work. So interesting to see that. Now here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds. You can see we are running the Mali G3 one. This box is running Android 11, and you decide whether it is rooted or not. And here are the results for the internal disk speeds. So we achieved read speeds of 157 and write speeds of 65 megabytes per second. And in the Wi-Fi speed test, we achieved download speeds of 60 and upload speeds of 17 megabits per second. And these are the fastest speeds we achieve in this area. Nothing I can do about that, but this box is achieving my top speed. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 156 and multi core score of 541. And we are using Geekbench 5.5.1. Geekbench 6 is not available for this box. 
And in the ANTU2 benchmark test, we achieved 108K. So let's see how that compares with the others. And this is my top TV box performance chart for 2023, showing you all the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And the ranking is based on benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see that the UGOS X4Q Pro has taken position 8 on this chart with a benchmark score of 108K. I've also given this box an overall rating of 4.5 out of 5. So you can also see the performance scores and my overall rating all color coded to make it easier for you to read. Furthermore, you can read the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new UGOS U4Q Pro. And here are my thoughts, starting off with the caveats. Now Netflix was not available to download from the Play Store, so I had to sideload it. It did work, but required a mouse to operate, and it's limited to 540p resolution. Disney Plus again sideloaded, but crashes every time you try to stream a movie. Also, you're only getting one USB 3 port on this box. So those were the main drawbacks for you to consider. On the positive side, you're getting a compact space saving box, which is powered by USB type C and it only requires five watts of power. So you could power this thing off a power bank and maybe use it whilst you're commuting with a portable monitor or even a small portable projector, all powered off a power bank. It's ambitious, but it will certainly work. Also, all round performance is pretty good. No lagging or stuttering at all. It handles 4K HDR at 60 FPS, nice and smooth. You can certainly stream 4K content from your internet TV packages with no issues at all. You have official 4K streaming from YouTube and Amazon Prime Video. Games that I tested played quite well. And you have comprehensive tweaks and features to play with from within the system settings, more than what you would normally get with other TV boxes. UGOS likes to give you these extensive options, including root options and ongoing firmware updates. And if all that was not enough, you get a responsive Bluetooth remote control. So bottom line, for what this box offers you, this is nothing but surprising for the money. You don't usually get this many features in an Android TV box for such a low price. Now, of course, if you can look past those caveats, then this is certainly a great box to get your hands on. So that concludes my video review of the UGOS X4Q Pro. I hope you found it useful. Please do hit the like button if you did. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.